Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. Secret Santa. It's actually too late for this year, but it's not too late for next year. Mitch and company have some great stories how it has been a wonderful program this year, and every card shop ought to do it, and a collecting group because it fosters some great fellowship. Plus, you get some good stuff. So thanks, sponsors, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, ComC.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Tops, Panini, and Upper Deck. Welcome, Stefan and Angela Loeffler, Rich Klein, and Matt Galvin is joining us. Rich, why don't you lead off? We're fortunate in the DFW area to have card stores, but by very local card store, Triple Cards, which is about five minutes from my house. And it's basically for unopened stuff. But they had a Secret Santa program this year among the Triple Card family of stores. They had 86 people participate. And then like eight days before Christmas, a Secret Santa party at one of the family stores. They brought pizza in and there were cookies on the table and drinks. And I thought it was a great idea because it fostered people giving stuff to other people, a camaraderie. And then after the Secret Santa part, there was trade night too. So it really was a good thing for the business as a whole. And I remember commenting to the owner, that was a great way to do extra businesses, actually. Were there secret Santa price levels? There were. There was $50, $100, and $200. Do I have very many $200 friends? But what boxes cost nowadays... That's what it takes to get something. That's what it takes to get some of them. And everybody got something they wanted. And everybody got something they wanted. And they said, if you can go above your price point for the person, we encourage you to do that. In my case, it was easy because I've told the story... My good friend Raymond Jones and I went to this guy's house to pick up a donation. He had texted me and said, I have a donation for you. Raymond has a mini SUV. I come back and I'm carrying two boxes on my lap, which is how much we filled up his SUV. So I said, when I saw the name of who I got on the text, I said, I think I can go over the $50 for him. Right. So I got a box for him and a cheaper box of Pokemon for his son. So his son was thrilled. And that was very nice. And then they for quite a bit of trade night. And it was a well-done thing. I, for the last two years, have also been doing Net54 Secret Santa. This year, we had some twists and turns, which were very funny in retrospect, but at the time aggravated me. But Matt, you were part of it. Tell them how you got involved, why you decided to do it this year. For me, part of card collecting is collecting the cards, but I get really excited about growing community and getting to do things with like-minded people who are interested in baseball cards. And it's been really fun over the last year and a half to meet some great folks, but Net54 had the Secret Santa. The other fun thing about the Secret Santa is that it forces you to delve into a subject that Lee would have no business dealing in. I had a guy from the Northeast and had wanted just some basic memorabilia from the Northeast. And so it was really fun to get on eBay and different other sites looking at pictures from the 1910s, 20s, and 30s of baseball teams or postcards, things that I looked up and said, I'd have no reason to be looking at this other than the Secret Santa, but ended up giving him a really cool picture, a 1940s Connecticut moose framed team picture. So I'm a T206 guy, so got some great looking T206 Collins as well. It's a win for everyone, and I know Rich did a great job of coordinating as well. I appreciate that. I had a couple of funny stories. There were a couple of people who sent me met DMs later. I'm not getting anything. I got them all in late, but it was a couple of people who forgot to hit send. And then a week or so after Christmas, I had somebody said, I haven't gotten anything yet. I said, I don't think I ever got an address from you. It's <laughs> hard for you to receive anything if I don't get an address. He has since gotten his secret Santa yet. So. But it's a lot more fun if there's like a party or right. a, a, a come together. Yeah, what I do, and do the Net54 have any of that? Because they're all over the country. They're all over the country. About 6 p.m. Christmas Eve, I encourage everybody to post pictures of okay. what they get. Okay. In fact, there was somebody who wanted Amelia Earhart memorabilia. So they got some really cool newspapers framing things with Amelia Earhart. That was really cool. I think that's Scott you sent. It's Connecticut. I yeah, that's well, that was the Connecticut Moose that yeah. sent Scott. Yeah. yeah, I think that's. I think his name is Scott. He sent that to, and Scott's really a cool guy. I've talked to him a couple of times. I think and, Secret Santas are great in general for introducing people to the hobby because people ask for different things. They're like, I like baseball. And then you're like, okay, what do I do with this? And then you start to Google, you start to research, and you're like, 
okay, what is this hobby? And I, oh. and I did another Secret Santa. Were you also part of Bo Spencer Thompson's Secret Santa? I was not part of any Secret Santa this year because I was gone for most of December. And okay, I didn't that's my condolences on your grandmother. Thank you. So I didn't do any this year. However, generally I've taken part in some of the larger Reddit ones, which are basically the internet through a party you're invited to. And I've met some interesting people through that website, but I've gotten some interesting things too. Handmade ornaments, all sorts of... There, some people don't tell you as much as what they want to collect or what they like, but one of the things that I saw looking through his profile and what all he posted, he was a huge fan of John Candy, so we'd got a film script signed by some of the staff. I've got his rookie card in there. Nice. <laughs> but like, for example, the year before, one of the participants tracked me down through Leon. I was not doing anything other than coordinating, but sent me a 1910 Columbia baseball program nice. as a random act of kindness. I did not ask for anything. It was somebody I knew, but it was quite clear that he just did that to be nice. Okay, on a more practical matter, you're getting back into it. You've got uh, a, a dad, you've got uncles and aunts, you've got a wife. And so the challenge on the not-so-secret Santa is that people would like to give you a Christmas gift or some other gift. And how do you make that known? In the secret Santa, you're teeing it up. But can you tee it up for your wife or your dad or your uncle or other friends that don't know what to get for you? And instead of getting you a tie, you'd rather get a tie cob. What mechanism is there for collectors to let it be known what they would like? It's a difficult question. A Thai cob in a perfect world would be amazing, but the reality is it's probably never going to happen. But that's okay. I think that for me, there's a little bit of education on my wife's part. She's kind enough to be educated enough to dabble in a little bit. So this year, she knows my passion towards T206, and she ended up getting me two plates of T206 players. I think she really had no idea what she was doing, but it was amazing. She ended up getting me this really cool Ty Cobb plate as well as a Tris Speaker plate. It was ironic because Tris Speaker is actually the marquee player that I'm going after this year, and she okay. had no idea. Maybe you talk in your sleep. Maybe I talk in my sleep. Something about Tris Speaker. Tris Speaker. <laughs> Great yeah. Eagle. The Great Eagle. I know. He's from Texas. Is he? That's right. His final words were, I am Tris Speaker. Because he, they were trying to revive him. And that actually are the final words he said. Wow. But it is a difficult question, though. I think that you can lead your friends and family to the water a little bit. I think part of the excitement is not knowing what you're getting, so you don't want to send them links to something you want exactly. The hint but cannot be too heavy. That's right. But you want to do it in a way where... Leave you your can, browser open. Yeah, exactly. Minutes. So... I think there's a lot of ways to do it. List. <laughs> I find that when you make it more general, they find things you have never thought existed. Like, you don't want to, like, lead them exactly to the card you want. You want to lead them to the realm and then let them play in that realm. And then you're all generally come up with something. that and get ups upsold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I want to go back to one thing about the party. One thing I forgot to mention with Triple was that they also made sure to get small boxes of cards for everybody who attended. Everybody, everybody got party favors, and they got corporate sponsorship from Tops and Panini, and we sent a few things. Because you talked about the party, but it was a party plus. So it was really nicely done, and I do want to stress that. One year, one of the people who used to run the Secret Sound on the 54 had extras of one of those 1950s playing cards, and he sent out those cards to everybody who participated. I, I have to look for something similar for next year. That's one of my goals. And the other goal is I know what screwed up this year and I will fix that for next year. <laughs> you were good. <laughs> there were people who did not hit send their addresses. And it's like, yeah. You had a want list too that was very easy to figure out. That's true. The general topic of T206 is pretty easy. Okay, so what would happen if you got a duplicate? Would you sell it off? Would you trade it off? Well, right now you're still on the accumulating phase, but would you buy a group of them at a really good deal? Or are you a purist where you only want the ones you need? Yeah, I think if I need to sell it, I could. I actually was thinking about this the other day. I haven't really done any trading. And that goes back to the community part too. So trading is probably the first avenue that I would look at as far as getting rid of duplicates. But selling is fine. It's pretty easy to unload. T206 in the right places, but but yeah, trading would be the first avenue that I would run to. My guess is if you went to the Dallas show, the Waters Creek show, and you just didn't knock on every table door, but if you just went to the ones that had vintage stuff and say, hey, 
I'm collecting T206 is let me know if you ever have any. It wouldn't take very long before they would associate you. And T218, same thing. They'd be on the lookout. And they might bring them the next time. I think Ryan Nolan does that. He's He's building up a national network. Developing the sense of community. They need to know Mm -hmm. you and what you're about. You're the twins collector. So people are going to figure that out. There's a dealer at the show, at least one that puts stuff away for both you and I at the Dallas Card Show. Instead of having to worry about looking through the stuff, he's handing you boxes. The thing with having a table is people come to you with their stuff and if they're thinking, I I already know where it's going, they're going to buy it from that person. But if they don't know where it's going or they don't know enough about it, it can walk away. Not related note. I bought at the last show from Jerry Adamick some Callahan Hall of Famers. The non-players, but he had them in a dollar box. They weren't perfect, but they were nice enough for a dollar. They're maybe five, ten dollar cards. Don't get me wrong. They're not super expensive. And as we're chatting, he goes, because you and I both know Jerry for a long time. Jerry still hasn't finished that set, and he started reciting to me which cards he needed to finish that set. All the late issue cards. All the late issue cards. But I was still impressed that he still was focused on trying to finish his set. He's a throwback. He's a true collector, a set completer guy. I bet he's got T206s, Matt. I can guarantee that's why we're telling you this. He lived most of his life in Cleveland and St. Louis and those kind of places. A lot of interesting things have come through Cleveland over the years that people do not realize. When they run card shows in Cleveland, I've lived in Cleveland. The vintage show in Strongsville. It's great. It's totally vintage. It's totally they vintage. Would, like, you'll see things that... It'd you, be a mini national for T206s. I true. And older cards. It's, you're not allowed to have a table there unless 75% of your table is older stuff. Probably they used to have, they used to have they like 100% display, but saying. now that Paul Fusco passed and Leland's is running, it's like a little, little. Yeah, yeah. Also, the shops in the Cleveland area. There's a, several shops that are... Mainly other businesses, but it's like a person's garage. There's no organization. You just go in and you have to go dig. Sounds like and AU you'll, Sports. And you will find all sorts of stuff from all years just digging through. There's also the ones where the sign in the door is a phone number. Call me and I'll come over and open the store. Matt, is this the community you want to be associated with? <laughs> Sounding a little me. strange. This no, is the Cleveland, fun thing. Cleveland in general is a little strange as a town. But Just remember, it's, it's not Detroit. I will say one thing I am looking forward to is trips around the country that I'll need to take Absolutely. here and there for work or whatever it is, a vacation family. For instance, I've got a trip coming up to Boston here in a few weeks, and it'll be fun to think about, hey, where are some spots that I can land and go you know, check out a collection in Boston or a store? Just beware when you're looking at Google that maybe half the list is actually in existence. Call it, before it, you yeah, go. <laughs> very true, very true. And, and there are a couple big shows in Boston, so you can do things if you arrange your trip correctly where you can combine the business trip and a little bit of a side, have fun, and be overwhelmed by the amount of cards. Okay, the whole thing of Secret Santa, was anybody disappointed? No. So it's a foolproof, positive thing, and especially the way Triple did it, it was win. Exactly. That sounds really cool. The card companies liked it. They did well. Everybody won. won. And so much so that you could be in several Secret Santas. Yes, and enjoy that. I'm a big fan. They did it really first rate. And at 54, the people did it first rate. And I'm always excited to see the photos of what everybody posts. Leon has assured me if I want to do it again next year, it's ready. I think it's we can safely say it is going to be back next year. Yes. And I'm still looking for a Secret Santa program where I can give a box of stuff I don't want <laughs> to somebody who then would magically want it. Oh, and nice. give me a box of stuff that they don't want. That I do want. I don't think those secret Santa programs exist. <laughs> no, no, it's a party type for Christmas. I can't remember what white it's elephant. Called. That white elephant where you go around and you just pass the pile oh, of yeah. stuff. My stuff. It actually worked really well in the card world because you could dress up your box to look like anything. Good point. It would be an interesting. And my box thing. would be really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays, people realize a heavy box not so good. You want a light box. Light box. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.